also be inviting uh, Ms. Priscilla Gunn, Director of Volunteer Resource Organization from NCSS, to answer any of the questions that you have uh, on the Padlet from NCSS. So uh, meanwhile, maybe, maybe I can just uh, invite Priscilla to uh, share your thoughts on the conversation so far. Hello, hi, a very good afternoon to everyone here. Um, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you for taking time out from your lunch, you know, to really attend this uh, session with the main intent to want to learn and grow together for the longer haul of our organization and for the longer term good of the people that we are here to serve. So I really want to thank you for that. And the second thing is really to thank you all for what you do in um, enabling, um, you know, sustain and strategic volunteerism in Singapore, because without all of you, even if there are volunteers, there will be no volunteerism because um, volunteer managers are very important um, a part in driving the whole um, you know, um, uh, uh, social service sector as well as nationally. So thank you all for what you do. Um, I'm really glad that all of us are here to really um, um, see um, beyond the horizon on what we can do um, you know, beyond the day-to-day -day things that we are being caught up, but to also see beyond what we could do for the organization to ensure that you know, we carry through the organization through the practices that we institutionalize within the organization to um, you know, uh, take, take the organization through ups and downs and to also share that you know, we are all, um, all of us who are here attending this session today, we are actually all in the same boat together, um, um, you know, riding on the same waves that come our way. But uh, to know that we actually do have a community um, of volunteer management practitioners, we call it VMP for short, uh, you know, whether you are from a corporate, um, social service agencies or public agencies um, or the healthcare, we, we, are all, we are all in the same community of, um, you know, um, of VMPs together and I'm glad that we are able to learn and grow together and to go through ups and downs together. Um, and lastly, just want to share that NCSS remains very committed to really uh, being a very strong support system to all of you as you take the frontline position to really work on the social defense of our country and to really take care of the lives of the last, the lost, and the least through what you do in enabling volunteerism to augment manpower, which can be finite, uh, can be limited uh, by funding or you know capacity, but the pool of uh, volunteers that you engage is an infinite manpower to the whole organization. And because of all of you, the organization can take leaps and bounds, uh, quantum leaps and bounds in, um, you know, not just strengthening social service delivery, but also in the whole entire organization's transformation. So thank you all for being here today and uh, hope that the last segment uh, to um, what uh, our speakers, uh, you know, are, are here to, to uh, address your questions will help to give you further insights on what you can take back uh, and unpack you know, to um, institute within your, institutionalize within your organization for the longer, for the greater good. So, so pass the time back to Ting Yi. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Actually, uh, while well, we have you, um, we actually have an interesting uh, question on the Padlet. So maybe I can just read it out. So um, the question is to NCSS. So Chris, uh, do let us know your thoughts. Um, is VCP applicable or compulsory to every agency who owns a volunteer program? And how re relevant is VCP if volunteering is not the core work of the organization? So the person goes on to say, it sounds like good to have plan with the mitigation, etc. But it's also something which each individual agency should take into consideration both based on their own resources. Um, not everyone has a team to look into this and uh, could, could it just be an individual or two? Otherwise, it may seem like extra work that's good to have and in case to draw up. Yeah. Yeah. So your thanks, thoughts, thanks. Please? Thanks for the question. Um, and and um, to, to start off, uh, indeed, um, you know, the things that we do in SCSS, the frameworks and publications are all not compulsory. Um, they're all really good to have and we strongly encourage you to consider them. Um, and of course, um, taking into consideration um, the workload, the, the pace, uh, the phase that you are in, um, you know, the volunteers that you have, um, you know, I, I, I know that you will see how you could line it up, uh, if not now, but maybe hopefully in a, in a very near future. Uh, but the very fact that you have come here, um, you know, um, uh, to, to learn is, is a great step by itself. And it's um, always okay to start small sometimes. And because that one leap of faith that you take today, which could be a very small step to just start small, um, you know, and, and see what you could do, um, you know, to, to have a very simple uh, continuity plan could lead you to places. So, so that's, uh, I think, what this session is really for, to really en encourage you to do so and, and to perhaps, um, you know, be able to, through NCSS, be able to connect you to fellow um, volunteer management practitioners who could be perhaps in the same uh, phase and stage um, and size of the charity to um, have cross learnings so that you know that it's actually not too difficult as perhaps what we perceive, um, you know, and maybe it, it's, um, you know, through someone's um, um, uh, path that they have trodden, uh, you, know, the tread, you know, it's, it's something that's easy to, to institute. Yeah. Okay. 
Thanks, Chris. Um, so I will just um, be inviting back uh, Teresa and Xingwei to also join in on the rest of the Q&A. So there are quite a few questions, but we will get through as many as we can. Yeah, so maybe we can start off with Teresa. So um, how, the question is, how do we best document our VCP and how often should we update it um, considering some frequent changes in uh, measures and safe management measures? Yeah, so yeah, I, there are quite a lot of um, changes that happen operationally on the ground, especially with the, with the changes in, in, in all the measures. Um, but really, in terms of the VCP, I think I would sort of encourage everyone to think of it more in the practical terms of really planning right for when crisis hits. So the, the key buckets need to be in around just knowing which are your critical roles, um, you know, what are some contingency measures you can take, who are your uh, people, the audience, your volunteers that you need to communicate with. So those are the really, really big buckets you take care of. Um, you know, coming down to the actual operational details around, oh, how many in a group, um, you know, uh, you know what, what distance do you sit, sit from one another? So all those do are very, very micro of operational details. You don't actually need to update your VCP in, in, in accordance with those because those really, right, you, you just take the, the, the measures that are recommended uh, as and when. Um, but so the VCP, you really want to put in place things in which will help you plan ahead, um, like, you know, your resource considerations, um, you know, do we have enough volunteers? Are our volunteers pool sufficiently diversified, right? So that when, when volunteer supply hits, um, you know, we, we don't get too affected. Um, and then when it comes to day-to-day, -day, um, those are not things that need to be updated. Um, so in terms of an update cycle for your VCP, we recommend typically um, once or twice a year. Um, really just to make sure that your VCP is still in the, uh, accordance with your, your programs, uh, the, the business that you're running. Um, so, you know, in terms of, you know, the types of critical programs you have, the range of volunteer roles that you have, that it sufficiently captures all the key aspects that are needed to be there. Um, so it, you can do it in line with, for example, if you, if you have a BC, uh, business continuity plan in place, which typically has its, its review cycle as well, you can take it together with that review cycle. Or if you have an annual planning exercise in place, um, you know, to plan for the activities for your programs, that can be a time as well to uh, take a look at your VCP to make sure that it is updated and, you know, in line with what the, the, the key programs you're running as well. Thanks, Arisa. Yeah, good point on that. Um, Simi, there's a related question. So uh, did the development of uh, VCP lead to an increase in admin uh, work for your, your team? And um, with the amount of tracking for volunteers, how can we keep up with VCP and other admin data too? Can I have your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely it's uh, additional work. So uh, definitely we, 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 we do spend uh, quite a bit of time uh, coming up with the plan. Then, uh, so, but because it's really important, like in, I mentioned that in 2020, we suspended our volunteering for close to six months, almost no engagement with the volunteer. But last year, we, when we resumed, I think we had like more than 3,800 uh, engagement with the volunteers sessions and more than 640 uh, unique volunteers actually served for the whole of last year. Without a VCP, that would have happened in the midst of the pandemic. So, so I think, it's really important. So even though it takes additional work, uh, but we do see the value doing it. Uh, then, uh, and also take discipline. I think for us, it's helpful is because uh, we work with EY. Then EY actually hold us accountable for the plan. <laughs> so so this, this process of accountability also uh, helped us to make sure that uh, we really look into it and ha having something from, uh, yeah, but the, I mean, it, it do take uh, effort uh, to, to put this together. Mm, thanks, Simi. Thanks for putting the effort. Um, last question. Uh, last few questions. Um, first one for Simi and Teresa. So, uh, either of you, please feel free to chime in. Um, how the question is, how do we know if our VCP works, and how do we involve volunteer staffs and service users in this creation? Uh, and can we do a dry run of the VCP? What What are your thoughts? Maybe Teresa first. So well, um, I think in terms of how, how you know whether a VCP works, there are probably a couple of aspects to it. Uh, one is really in consultation with the, the, the programs and centers that we work with. Um, just really being clear on both ends, you know, what is the um, expected extent of involvement of volunteers? How can volunteers support you uh, during a crisis, right? That clarity on both sides is important in terms of um, uh, understanding what role they play as well as an agreement of what, what, what will happen when, when um, a crisis hits. I think the other aspect of knowing when uh, a VCP works is, there's a question around, do we do, do, we do a test run? Um, and in some cases you can, you can do a test run. Um, 
especially in, in certain scenarios that you want to play out. So, for, I mean, a, a good example could be, um, for example, before we all went on home-based learning for, um, uh, right, for, for, for school, um, MOA did a couple of pilot runs around, you know, can people stay at home and actually, uh, you know, uh, do on, uh, online learning, for instance, right? So these are things that can be worked in into actually your day-to-day -day work. So for example, do you want to adopt a hybrid arrangement, for example, even when we return to, 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 um, to normalcy, uh, such that at every juncture, there are certain things that get tested out, certain, certain practices that get tested out, um, ever, even as we um, you know, uh, maintain op normal operations. Hmm, thanks, Teresa. Seeing we do you have anything to add on that, like how do they know if their PCP works or dry run or involvement of the other stakeholders? Yeah, I think uh, for us in our context, uh, it's the first time that we are doing this BCP. So, so I think we, we really do it in-house uh, and, and it's just between the volunteer management team and our program staff. So we, we keep it to that. And, and also the context that we, when we are developing this for the whole last year, I think our soul in our mind is COVID-19, it's the pandemic. So, so and the, 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 our thoughts is that, okay, so how can I still continue our volunteer engagement in the safest manner? So I think our dry run is that, yeah, our programs still continue and things still work well. Lah. So, so it's not, I think also we have to look into the context that this plan is for. So let's say it's for fire, it's for haze, then probably certain dry run might be helpful. But let's say it's on continuing uh, the program in the midst of pandemic, then I think by the fact that your program still continue, it means yeah, it's working. So, so, so I think I think we might want to also think a bit about the context that uh, the plan is developed for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, uh, the last question is for uh, Chris. So um, the question is, uh, will NCSS be providing additional support to help us develop our own VCP? Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, so, so thanks for asking the question. I, I think, um, you know, NCSS, um, there, there is a team which um, uh, a few of us are actually from today, um, um, you know, trying to uh, ensure that we strengthen the volunteer management capabilities of our charities. Uh, the team is actually called the Volunteer Resource Optimization Team. Um, and we are all here really to stand with you uh, and to be with you, um, beside you, you know, in this journey of um, uh, uh, strengthening your work. So feel free to reach out to any one of us at DRO. Um, um, in fact, anything regarding volunteer management, not just volunteer continuity planning, um, you know, whether it's a volunteer management framework or, you know, volunteer management system, anything that helps you in a, uh, driving volunteer management in a more strategic and a more sustained manner, that's also what we're trying to drive at. Um, you know, towards for SGKS, the national movement. I think the team here um, in NCSS will be so, so happy to um, be there to answer any of your queries. And additionally, we will also be happy to connect you, um, you know, to um, you know, people within the volunteer management uh, community whom we know will be able to help give you maybe some lenses, like how Singh was sharing, you know, his journey with many people. And I'm sure it resonates and it, it, it does help, um, you know, with this, uh, you know, having gone through the same journey. I think all, all these conversations really do help. And lastly, we do also organize um, a network sessions, volunteer management network. Um, you know, I think some of most of you have also um, joined uh, in these sessions previously where we share and get the transference of learnings uh, across the sector. So we welcome you, um, you know, to reach out to us anytime. And we welcome you to also join our volunteer management network sessions. Mm, okay. Thanks, uh, Chris, and uh, thanks, Simi and Teresa as well for sharing and all of the questions. I'm so sorry to those um, who we have not answered everything, um, but we got as far as we can. Um, I wanted to uh, invite all of you to actually share one key takeaway for our audience, maybe like your one sentence takeaway for our audience. Uh, Simi, can I invite you to uh, share? I think it's, uh, it's it, I mean, it's, it, honestly, for the last one year doing the plan, is not easy. I think it's, it, 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 it do takes a lot of time, it do takes a lot of effort. But I think now we are at, towards the end of the year when we look at the, the progress that uh, we made when we did our year review, I think we do see the fruits now of uh, the work that we put in. So, so yeah, I mean, if, if you need, uh, if you guys need anyone to, 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 to speak to, I might not be able to give you a professional insight like what Teresa can do. Yeah, but probably sharing of journey experiences, some of the tips on how to make it easier. Feel free to, to just drop me an email. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Simi. Uh, Teresa? Hi. Uh, yes, I, I think it's uh, it, it can be initially quite daunting. I guess looking at the the you know what Jim shared and the extent of some of the the um, the framework contents. But actually, 
really is is keep, be, keeping it practical for an agency. And really, what, once you and we hope that with the guidance and the workbook provided, it can really be a very uh, self guided journey as well as um, you know a, a way in which you can start thinking about putting it in place. Um, don't don't need to aim for perfection in terms of covering all the services. Really, just really starting small. Uh, would be one way to go, hopefully. Great, great. Um, and can I invite Prince, your yeah. one key takeaway? Yeah, so I just want to show the tagline for uh, IGDA. You know, they have a Start Small, Dream Big campaign. I think we're all here um, for this session, really not to try to do all things, but I think we're here today on this drawing board together as a community to dream big for our sector because we know that it will help, um, you know, the charities to be stronger and with stronger charities, it will go on to become stronger service delivery and thereby also means, um, you know, a transformation in the lives of the people that you are here to serve. So encourage us to take that leap of faith, but let's not, um, you know, uh, let's continue to, to dream big um, for, for what we can do uh, through our influence. Yeah, thank you. 